Yes, welcome along to episode 7 of Up in the Ante in association with Bet365 with David Jennings and Gavin Lynch counting down to the 2021 Cheltenham Festival. Gavin, it's Christmas. It's Christmas. Happy Christmas. How are you feeling? Ah, sure, I'm grand. Uh, I have a present for George in the car, so I must give it to you. Gavin, yeah, she doesn't deserve one. Really? She doesn't deserve a present. Ah, she does. All she does. night she does. last she does. night, she does. screaming the house down. Little angel. I don't know how people have more than one. I just don't know. <laughs> we, um, we stopped at two. An angel in the day, a demon at night, as I say. Are you uh, all set? Yeah, uh, thanks be to God we've racing. Uh, thanks be to God we've sport, because otherwise you'd just go cuckoo. You would. Like we did last April. So looking forward to a great uh, festival of racing, yeah. Are you looking forward to Christmas Day more than St. Stephen's Day or St. Stephen's Day more than Christmas Day? Uh, sure, whatever, good. Uh, we were due to have a, a, a dinner with uh, my sister and her husband indoors, but now we're having a barbecue outside. You're not. And we're wearing ski gear, yeah. You're like the Aussies. So we're turning it into a... a Christmas ski. Day outside in the Lynch house. Having a barbecue, yeah. Have you Marie's present bought? Now, you forgot her anniversary last year. I did. You can't forget Christmas. No, and I remember last week, the anniversary, so that was good. Uh, yeah, oh. Christmas present bought, yeah. Okay, good, happy? And, yeah, good, yeah. You? Yeah, practical or...? Uh, a voucher for Kildare Village <laughs> but don't tell her well I got Aoife I thought which was a fabulous present a night away in the Westbury right. and we were going to have it before Christmas but with the restrictions we just decided at the last minute just wasn't the right time for it you so want to go as well first present <laughs> first present down to Swanee not a good start but I've got a few backup lined up so good, good. let's get on with the show so you know the drill by now. Each week we start off with our questions from the crowd segment. Yes, where you, the viewer, get to interact with myself. And Gavin Lynch, do please send in questions. We love answering your questions. Put them on YouTube under the show. Send me a message on Twitter or on Facebook. There's loads of ways you can ask questions. Send in your questions, any queries you have. And the first one this week comes all the way from down under in Australia. It is Anthony from Melbourne. And Anthony wants to know what is our favourite handicap at the Cheltenham Festival, Gavin? His is the Grand Annual because they go a million miles an hour from the word go. Uh, firstly, uh, Anthony, how you going, mate? Uh, he's a nice fella, Anthony. I met with him. Um, you know him? Yeah. Oh. Uh, we have a mutual friend and he came over to Ireland and England uh, in March 2019, 18 months ago, and he went to Cheltenham. And he was having a disastrous start and uh, he ended up back in six winners in a row. Thanks to you. I had a couple of, he actually oh, watches well, you know, yeah. no no but uh, he watches up on the ante okay. every year and uh, he's actually sent us a question every year so okay so your favourite handicap what is it I'd probably say the Martin Pipe just because it's probably the easiest to try and make a few quid uh, it's usually won by a novice I think I'll back to winner a few times Sir Deschamps early Dampoli, doors Kilultavik early doors so I like the Martin Pipe just that it's maybe easier for making a few quid mm. and I, I did love the novices handicap chase because I had a good record in it Bally Alton won it Tully East won it but I think overall I like the Coral Cup two and a half mile handicap and it was the race where I thought the best ever Chetlam ride was held in okay now people won't even remember this but go and look it up if you can Davy Russell on Diamond King Forgot was just an incredible ride because I think in them handicaps you can't give away ground on the outside you have to be ballsy you have to try and get cover and he scraped paint, there's no paint of course, but if there was paint, he scraped paint on the inside the whole way, saved every inch of ground. I just thought it was a brilliant ride. And I think it's a kind of a classy race. You saw Wicklow Brave a couple of years ago, obviously just beaten last year, Damn the Company. Mm. It's a classy race for horses that are almost top grade. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Carl I think Cobb. that's 1-0 to David Jennings, is it? I think I beat you there. Done. There you go, Anthony. That's your question from the crowd. Our second question this week comes in from Patrick Parsons. And Patrick wants to know if, now it's hypothetical, so just play along okay. for the game, okay? If Envoy LN ran in the Ryanair, what price would he be and would he win it? And if Shishkin ran in the Champion Chase rather than the Arkle, what price would he be and would he win it? So Envoy LN, first okay. of all, what uh, price? I was thinking about this and I said to myself, first of all, my thoughts were 5-2. to two, And I said, if the club 5-2, to they get knocked over. Mm. So I said, probably 2-1. to 2-1, to one, 15 to 8, I agree. And would he win it? I think he would. I think you would. And I think that the Ryanair is easier to win than, say, the Champion Chase. Let's do a comparison. Shaq and Purswap beat Min last year in Leopard Sound. So that would tell you, I think, that the Champion Chase would be harder. Mm. So Shishkin, I would put him in and say 5-1, to 6-1 one, one shot. And a bit big. No, he's only had one run over fences. So you couldn't say yet. But um, would he win the Champion Chase? I think it'd be very, very tough for a novice to do that. I think it'd be easier to win the Ryanair. So I'd go yes for Envoy LN and I'd say probably not quite for Shishkin. Okay, I'll agree with you on Envoy LN. I'm agreeing with you. I don't think Shishkin would win the champion chase because if Shaka Bursua is the horse that we hope he is, maybe he might just be a little bit or more Altior. experienced. But, or Altior. But I don't think he'd be 5-1. to one. I'd be 3-130. to 130. No, I think he'd be 5-1. to one. And um, I think he's a massive chance next year. 
Okay. Yeah. Well, he won't be fighting to one next year, probably. No, probably not. There you go, Patrick. That was your question. Our final question this week comes in from Kevin Robertson. And it's simple, Gavin. Kevin just wants to know, our banker of the Christmas racing period. Okay. I'm going to go for Asterian for Lange and Limerick. Are you? Yeah. I think he's around 11 to 8. I think that's very fair. Do you? <laughs> I do. Um, pencil full of lead. I don't think he'd have, he'd have enough gears for Asterian for Lange. Asterian for Lange has to go right-handed. Uh, it was very impressive in Punchestown. He jumped the last three a little bit right. So I hope he's a couple of lengths in front coming to two out because he'd probably look a bit right there. He'd be conflated to one since. Um, and I think if he goes well this novice season, I could see him win the King George next year. Really? Yeah, because he has to go right-handed. But you love horses who do everything right. Mm. And he does so much but wrong. He, he, no, he does it right. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't even know what I did there. <laughs> yeah. But, um, yeah, no, I think he's got a massive chance. Col Reavy might be against him. And maybe Janadil, they're two great horses. But I, I think uh, Asterian Falange has a great engine. Okay, Asteria Falange in the matchbook. Betting exchange chase, a great one at Limerick on December 26th. It's Gavin Lynch's nap of and you? the Christmas period. Mine, I'm going to keep it simple, Gavin, because... For six weeks now, I have said there's only one horse to come in the King George. Okay. And that's surname. I have turned full circle. I explained. I put him up as my Gold Cup selection. That was obviously shooting for the stars. But King George, Kempton, the real surname, not the surname we saw in the race last year. This has flipped full circle. It's just the complete opposite of Clan de Zobo going into the race last year and surname. One is going into the race with a nice experience. The other is going into the race after a slog. I think surname will prove me from last year completely wrong and will prove the me from this year completely right. Okay. I'll be astonished if he's beaten. We are talking about the King George later in the programme, so... Yes, I'll, we I'll are. I'll come back to you on that one. Okay, he'll get stuck into me. So yep. my banker of the Christmas period, it's in the big one. It's King George on December 26th. And Gavin Lynch again, it is Asteria for Longe in the grade one at Limerick on December 26th as well. They can do a double, Gavin. Perfect. More Christmas tips. It's the week that was. This is Gavin Lynch's chance to impress you with all his vast array of knowledge. <laughs> Every horse that's impressed Gavin Lynch over the last seven days, he's going to talk about now. Over to you, Gavin. Thanks, Dave. Uh, we're going to start in Newbury on Wednesday. A horse called Lakeale's article had been off a long, long time, off for two and a half years. Uh, he's a six-year-old. He won for Nicky Henderson. He won a maiden hurdle by seven lengths. Um, kind of, he cheats a bit because he's got four legs and a propeller. Did you see his tail? He, uh, the tail. <laughs> uh, Nico hit him three times and he did the tail swish. But look, he, he went forward. Uh, maybe that's just his character, do you know? Uh, uh, like the comparison is obvious. Shishkin won at Newbury last year. Yeah. Owned by Joe Donnelly, trained by Nicky Henderson, ridden by Nico de Bonville. Are we looking at Shishkin? Uh, maybe. Uh, Nick, uh, Nicky said afterwards that if he steps up in grade, which obviously he will, he might step up and trip. He's 14 to 1 for the Supreme, but just. That would worry a little bit if he's going to be a two and a half mile horse. Mm. Uh, because Nicky already has Dusart maybe for the Supreme. So. Um, also in Newbury, Magic of Light uh, won the Mayor's Chase. Uh, she's 20 to 1 for the Mayor's Chase at Cheltenham. But the feeling you get is that they're going for entry. That mm. she probably won't go with Cheltenham. So just to tell people that. Brilliant jumper. Yeah, excellent. She won that race the third year in a row. Uh, on Thursday in Down Royal, Bill Away won a very, very competitive. Your beloved Bill Away. I can't yeah. believe you haven't tipped him up yet. Yeah, uh, it's getting a bit late now. He's into a 5-1 to one generally for the Fox Hunters chase. It was a good Hunters chase. It was a very, very good race. Uh, plenty of winners in it. Uh, plenty of fancy horses in it. Uh, he hit a flat spot as he does there at the top of the hill before they came to three out. And you thought he looked in trouble. Now, he looked beat, to be honest. He did, because he had to get that gap between yeah. the two horses. Yeah. And, and he kept the gap and uh, he powered on after the last. Um, he won quite well in the end. The one thing you'd have to say is that his jumping was decent. Mm. His jumping last March in Cheltenham was not good. If you go look at the replay, he jumped badly at Cheltenham. Well, I spoke to Willie and Patrick Mullins about Billaway, and they are convinced that all this horse needs is experience. Experience. Loads yeah. of racing, loads of jumping. It was inexperienced to caught him out last year at Cheltenham. So I'd say you'll see him plenty if they can. In every hunter's chase between now and Cheltenham, you'll probably see Billaway. Yeah, he's only had 13 lifetime starts, as you say. And uh, they're talking that he's going to go to Thurless at the end of January next. Because I think they made a mistake with the Dublin Racing Festival. They took the Hunter's Chase out of that, which mm. I thought was always a great race. Yeah, great. Uh, on to Friday, Navin. Navin was a very, very good uh, card. Mm. Uh, the ground was described as soft to heavy. The times were heavy. Uh, the first one to talk about is Bob Ollinger. He's now into 12-1 to for the Ballymore. He jumped fine. He travelled great. Uh, he was an 8-1 to on shot. He won a poor race. Um, he, visually, he was very impressed. Uh, very impressive. There's a big book coming here. There is a book coming. Now, I love the horse. I yeah, you're the... You're the founding member of the fan club. I never even heard of him when you started talking to him. Last March I mentioned him yeah. after he won a bumper in Gorn. But just to give you an idea, Ashdale Bob, who we'll mention in a moment, won a two and a half mile novice hurdle. 
uh, Jukebox Jive won a handicap. They both won in 5.27, right? Uh, Bob Ollinger's time was 14 seconds slower. Ah, Lord, holy God. And that's really? almost a furlong. Oh, so just to keep it in perspective, that his time was slow. Well, 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 why? Just to, he was in a, probably a nothing race and he just dawdled around and won easy. So he's a great horse, but it just wouldn't get... I'd like to see him again in, in grade one company. Wow, I was expecting you to be like, yeah. this horse will definitely win no. the Ballymore, but no. Because he did take the eye out of your head and he took, she took forever to pull him up and stuff, yeah. but just the time was very slow. Ashdale Bob uh, beat Fakira by six lengths in the grade two novice hurdle. Kind of a performance out of nowhere. It was a big price on the day. He, he's 16s for the Ballymore, 20s for the Bartlett. But the one thing I'll say is that Paddy Kennedy, a fellow who probably didn't get many opportunities before now because of Robbie Power, it just shows you when a jockey starts riding winners. Good horses. That jockeys just need winners to get confidence, yeah. and they just—he's improved Quite so much. Quite possibly hasn't he? the nicest person I've ever met. Really? Oh, an absolute gentleman. But yeah. his um, his ability has really shone in the last few months. Yeah. So good on him. And that horse was impressive. It was. Chance in the Albert Bartlett. Yeah. Uh, Holy Macaponi was favourite for the Bartlett and pulled up. It's now in places twenty to one the field for the Bartlett. <laughs> if you look around, I wouldn't have a clue where to start for the Bartlett. To be honest. No. Uh, also, uh, Sir Gerhard won the bumper. Well, uh, the time was okay. It was 4.15. The maiden hurdle was 4.16, so the time was fine. Apart from the, between the two and the one, he wasn't impressive, if you know what I mean. All the way around, he looked. Yeah. I, had, I had him in a double with another horse, so I wanted him to win. And I'm kind of watching him going, Jesus, is he yeah. traveling well? But even turning in, you could see Jamie, he was kind of moving a bit. He didn't travel overly well, no. He didn't. So I would imagine it was the ground. If there was 20 horse around him and Cheltenham, that would be my only worry that he gets a nice clear run to the bend. But his gears between the two and the one was just well, sensational. I thought coming in here today now, I thought we'd spend a half hour talking with Bob Ollinger and Sir Gerhard. Gavin yeah. is going to be waxing lyrical. And here you are, fine, picking holes. I'd say he's an exceptional horse in that. I'd say he hated the ground. Okay. But uh, he didn't travel well in the race, but his gears were fantastic. Okay, yeah. I, t I just presume coming in here today that this will definitely be your next tip on your anti-post portfolio. Well, no, I've already no. picked a horse for the bumper, so. Okay, you're not too worried, so. Yeah, I'd be worried enough, but uh, no, he's a good horse. Uh, on to, also on Friday, rather, is uh, Ascot. My Drogo uh, beat, um, won the, the novice hurdle by almost three lengths. Big horse. Yeah, he's going to make a lovely chaser mm. um, for the Skeltons. A few disappointments in that race as well. There was. Um, All Art, or All Art, uh, won the grade two um, novice chase for some over fences. He made a couple of mistakes early on, but his jumping over the last six fences was really, really good. And um, he won very well in the end, for, uh, beat Fiddler on the Roof. And he is, uh, I think he's a 14 to 1 shot for the, for the Marsh. On to Ascot on Saturday. Uh, this is why National Hunt Racing is better than flat racing, in my opinion. Uh, the long walk hurdle between Paisley Park, Time Hill, mm -hmm. and I backed Roxanne each way, so no harm done. But I actually Can't thought... she's going to win? Yeah, come to the last. I said to myself, if she wings the last, she might just yeah. get there, but she didn't. Time Hill must have traded incredibly short. Must have been yeah. close to 1 to 100. 1.06, I think. Did it. Yeah. Uh, Paisley Park, 4 or 5 lengths down, 2 out, and even at the last was 4 lengths down. So a fantastic performance by Paisley Park to show that he's coming back to his best. Um, Will he win the Sarah's hurdle? Like, they're 11 to 4 and 7 to 2, bet 365. That's roughly even money coupled. I don't know. I think they're a little have bit short. Have we got the right one? Sire de Berle, Fury Road, Ronald Pump, they all have chances, so... Yeah. I think it's a very good stairs hurdle, but I think mm. it's more open than that, that bet might suggest. On to Thurlis on Sunday. Uh, Scary at 10 um, won the beginner's chase by uh, 20 lengths, and it was 13 seconds quicker than the handicap chase, mm. so it was a good time. Yeah, Minister for Sport went quick there, yeah. Uh, I see he's 20 to 1 for the National Hunt chase, but um, Gordon already has Galvin, hopefully, for that. Gordon so, Elliott's dark horse in his race and post stable tour. Was it? Mm. I'd love to see him running the Kim Muir with Jamie Codd riding it, so. but he was very impressive. Um, and then we talk, the last one to mention is Galois. Mm. She's now 6-1 to one for the Mayor's Novice Hurdle. Her time was very fast. She was three seconds quicker than the bumper and six seconds quicker than the handicap hurdle. She beat Mighty Blue. Wouldn't give up a Mighty Blue. No. Now, she'd want to settle a bit better. Yeah, she settled. She made a few small errors. When she gets a fast pace, I give her a chance. I'm not sure if Chatham would suit her. I don't know, yeah. But a flatter track would suit yeah, her, maybe. Yeah, she's got pace and she's... She was rated 104 on the flat, yeah. Mighty Blue, so she's yeah. very, very good horse. Um, Sace Gold disappointed it was a big step down trip from 3 mile to 2 mile so but uh, Galois lovely turn of foot uh, jumps really well and has to have a chance at the mm. Mayor's Novice so. uh, but that mighty blue actually one of the owners in the syndicate made Aoife's engagement ring really Joe Kyo, yeah very good yeah I think he's got another diamond there maybe <laughs> <laughs> uh, so that's the week that was that is the week that was Yes, every week here on Up in the Angie, we preview one of the big races at the Chatham Festival and this week it is the turn of the Weatherby's champion 
bumper. So at the moment with Bet365, Sir Gerhard is their 5-2 favourite. Kilcrute is 10-1. to Let's be clear about a 14-1. to And Brandy Love and Chemical Energy are 16-1. to It is 18-1 to bar. 5-2, to Sir Gerhard. Value, yes or no, Gavin Lynch? Uh, it's about the right price. I thought it might go a little bit bigger. Did after you? I, I did. I thought um, that actually go a bit shorter. No, I just... It's got that sexy... X yeah, factor kind of look he about. He does, him. he does, but he just didn't travel brilliant. He travelled very well in the north. The times were similar, so there wasn't that big of a difference in the ground. But certainly turning in, I'd say he was second favourite at one stage, just turning in because mm. Jamie didn't seem to be sitting that comfortable. But when he got to the two pole, a new fantastic sense, gears. You're waiting on him for a double. So were you looking at him kind of for a with an eye, kind of going, oh, you know, when you have something back, you yeah. kind of think it's going worse, or you don't think you've got but, up in a photo finish. Was it like that? No, a little bit, but I've watched it since. And oh yeah, yeah. <laughs> he, he just wasn't <laughs> traveling. Brilliant uh, okay. turning in, but um, lovely horse, definitely favourite, and say he'll end up in a class act. Okay, so we're not back in Sir Gerhard at five to two. Kilcrew ten to one, tipped up by you at fourteens. Yeah. So you've um, got the value. Uh, just a quick time in Navin. The last three furlongs, he was much quicker than the horse that won the first race that day. Lovely horse. Uh, one thing to mention as well, uh, Willie has three excellent mares. Really, really top class mares. Brandy Love, Take Tea and Brooklyn Glory. Now, if it's a case that maybe if Kilcrut maybe got better at Leperson or whatever, I could see um, Willie running one of those maybe in Cheltenham and keeping one Who's of them. Who's the best of those three? I don't know. They're, they're, they've, three of them have bolted up the last yeah. day I saw. I think I you'll know. see Take Tea in different colours next time anyway. Probably, yeah, because mm. it was in, uh, in Jackie's colours. But I, I reckon one of those could maybe go to Cheltenham. Okay. I hope not, but could yeah, happen. Certainly not for Kill Cruz. Uh, of the others, Chemical Energy. Yeah, that was impressive again the last day. Um, looked maybe in a spot of trouble two out, but stayed on very, very powerfully. Hollow Games, who's going to win on the 29th of December at Leprosound. Going to win. Yeah. For Nolan Valerie Moore. I'd say he'd be odds on. But um, he's 20 to 1 for the, the mm. Cheltenham bumper. I just I doubt he'll be taking on. Um, Are we at Natal in England for the bumper? Petrosium was very impressive in, in Newbury, but not really. Okay, so you're happy with Kilcrude? Yeah, definitely has an each-way chance, yeah. yeah. Okay, I, I, I have no real opinion, to be honest. I'd like to see them all maybe once more before forming an opinion. But the bumper is, it's a great race every year. But I did think Take Tea was brilliant. In Nace, yeah. Yeah, I thought Take yeah. Tea was very good, so. Yeah. I maybe chance Take Tea. So that's your Weatherby's Champion Bumper Preview. Oh yes, have we got a Christmas treat in store for you. What's happening this week? Well, we've the small matter of Christmas, Gavin. So this is your Christmas festival preview. In a couple of minutes, in a little nutshell, we are going to give you the winners of the big races at the Chatham Festival. So we're going to kick off with the King George, Gavin. Yes. Please don't deflate me here. Please tell me the surname is going to win the King George. I'm going to back Clanders Oboe. Gavin, why? Do you listen to me at all? I do, yeah. Um, especially with Gaelic football. <laughs> Not horses, though. A bit, yeah. Mm -hmm. But uh, I like Clanders Obo. You're saying that he had a very hard prep in the Betfair Chase. I he went, did, Gav. I went, he did. I went and looked at him running in the Betfair Chase two years ago, and I went and looked at him running down Royal last year, because mm. I knew you were going to say this. And he had a very similar preparation in all three races. But it's Haydock, it's Bristol the Mai, it's deep ground, it's different. Yeah, now two years ago it wasn't deep ground, it, it was exactly, kind of good yeah. ground. But then down Royal it was soft, soft to yeah, heavy. Yeah, but it's down Royal and I don't know. And he certainly put him into the race. Um, so yeah, for me, Clanders Oboe, you know what you're going to get. It's like playing Liverpool in Anfield. This is his home ground. He loves Kempton. Uh, now, surname has won twice at Kempton, so he doesn't dislike it. And obviously last year, he was a bit tired after coming oh, up against I, Altior. I, I really think... But it's going to be a great race. I think you'll see a different horse. Now, now Santini has been supplemented. To me, that's a waste of five grand. <laughs> but, uh, Should he have started when, when he was supplemented? <laughs> maybe. But um, like Santini ran in the Cato Star a few years ago yeah. and... To me, he just... Ran well to finish third, actually. He did. He stayed on and stayed on. Yeah. He's just going to get tapped for toe four out, three yeah. out, isn't he? And he's going to stay on. He'll and stay on, yeah. He'll be like Itchy Feet was at Ascot on Saturday, I think. Do you he know just, what I mean? He's just going to stay on, never look like winning, but not get beaten that far. Yeah, I can imagine at the fifth last, he's going to be double digits and running. Maybe I'm wrong, but um, yeah. I think surname, yeah, great chance. But for me, Clanders Oboe is rock solid. Okay. Going well, for the hat-trick. Look, I just think with surname, I've said it so many times, yeah. I just saw something different at Weatherby. I saw a more mature horse. I saw a horse that kind of knew what racing was about now. And I didn't think it was all, you know, he was this kind of all or nothing performer. Do you know, we've seen it all in those Ascot handicaps and we've seen mm -hmm. it all against Altior. And then it was basically nothing in the King George. I think Nichols is a genius with these staying chasers. And I think in every interview I've heard, everybody's saying, oh, Clan is over going for the hat-trick. I think deep down he knows if both horses bring their A game, 
that surname is just a better horse than Yeah, Gallagher. I just wouldn't get carried away with the Weatherby performance personally. Yeah, there's plenty of people telling me that they don't think Harry Coblin was holding on to anything. Yeah, I just, in the last 100 yards, I know he's won on the bridle and it looks like he's bolted up. I just, I have my doubts. Okay. Uh, for me, uh, Clandis Obo uh, on its home ground. Okay, and it is surname for me. The Racing Post Novice Chase, a good sponsorship yeah. that we've continued, is at Leperstown on the 26th. And it looks like Inner Gamin is going to be a short price favourite. Yeah. How I did I pronounce that? Did I go Inner Gamin, yeah. Inner Gamin. Um, I think they're roughly joint favourites himself and Felix Deji. I'm going to go for Felix Deji. Uh, the reason for that is that I think... Um, he's far better hurdles or fences going left-handed. You saw that the last day in Punchestown. He jumped out to his left a lot early on in the race. Uh, to beat Sykes and Potsy is a good performance. I think Form he... Frank, yeah. Yeah, I think that um, the ground is going to be interesting in Leperstown. Given a lot of rain. I hope so, because the chase track at the moment is good to yield in the town of watering the chase track. And at the Dublin Racing Festival last, at the end of January last year, Loads and loads of non runners. So I just hope we don't get that because we want to see Hard competition. To believe, isn't it? Yeah. Teal ground in the end of December. Yeah. Darver Star would love the better ground, would love yeah. going left handed. Energamine was impressive in Goran Park, but for me, I'm going to go for Felix Deji. Okay, I can't have Darver Star. Just can't have him. And I'm going to go for Felix Deji as well. Okay. So we're in agreement, Gavin. Yes. Doesn't good. happen too often. No, it doesn't. Moving on to the 27th, and at Chepstow, it is the slog in the mud that is the Welsh National. Not your type of race, Not Gavin. for me, you know. I know uh, Sam Brown in the declarations or oh the five-day entries. Yeah, I was disappointed. What do you like? Look, at, I'll have no bet in the race, but Secret Reprieve is the right favourite around 72-4-1. to one. It won the trial. It's eight pounds well in. It won off 130. It's in off 134. It's new rating is 142. So the right favourite. I'll watch the race and I won't back anything. Yeah, I thought Yal Enki was just a bet to nothing each way. Probably will run his race. Ran well in the race last Stays year. Stays forever. Stays forever. Will be up there. You'll get a good run for your money mightn't just be good enough to win but yeah. we'll be there so I'm just going to give an each way squeak to Yala Enki also on the 27th we have Altior against Put the Kettle On now these are quite close in the market Altior and Put the Kettle On yeah. at Kempton surely this, is there not a load of a massive gap in ability between the two horses yeah I think so um, yeah, if, what it. price is Altior 4 to 6 8 yeah. to 11 yeah I'll probably throw that into a multiple I'd say I yeah. think he'll win I think he will too if she's yeah. better at Cheltenham and stuff, but I think he's just better. Yeah, see, she, she keeps giving away the weight. She keeps winning, so she's one of these horses that just she picks up the pieces, she picks up the scraps. Like even in and the, she's in the Arkle, now. she's very, very good. Very good. But even in in the Arkle, like you're kind of thinking, I should probably get beaten. And then a lot of horse didn't run well. Fakir made the mistake at the second last, but she still won. Yeah. And the slower at Cheltenham, you're saying Deffy Desai will probably win. He ran a shocker and and put the kettle on one again. So I, maybe I'm just underestimating her. I think beating Duke de Geneva is not amazing for him it's good for him but yeah. I think Altior okay. he's a superstar I think he'll be so it think, is think he'll win. Altior for both of us uh, moving on to the 28th the Savills Chase now Gavin this looks like it's going to be the race of the meeting yeah I just hope everything runs because it's it's a fantastic race the Manila Indo 2-1 to one, that'll be a bigger price on the day if they all run will it? yeah uh, I love Manila Indo yeah. uh, it's two performances in, in winning Wexford and Navin were very very good it's had a solo but two to one is too short now if they right. all run. Okay. I, I thought I thought on the day he might be shorter. No, okay. not if they all run. But okay. if the ground was going to yield and you're going to see non-runner, so it's, okay. it could flip around a bit. So we're going to say it's it's soft ground, just on the better side of soft. I have a big price horse in this one in a minute. Have you? I do, yeah. Uh, but present in person. I, I, I'm going to guess it. Who? Go on. <laughs> but, I have a feeling it's a Plutar. No. Um, but presenting Percy has to have a good chance bolted up in Thurless uh, Delta Work has to have a chance last year Delta Work and Denroy was beaten 15 lengths this year's only beaten 6 lengths yeah. and won the Savills Chase mm. so that must have a chance uh, Kenboy is in it after having a run at Plutard first time at 3 mile well it did go right handed at 3 mile and punched yeah, him yeah I mentioned winner yeah uh, it hasn't gone 3 mile left handed but a Plutard if it stays has to have a great chance and the winner is and the horse I'm going to back uh, each way at 16 to 1 is Sam Crow. you're not I am. Yes! <laughs> After all this time. Yeah. Fantastic. Um, I just I agree with you. <laughs> Obviously. Really? Yeah. Uh, I just think if the ground is kind of yielding. Now, if it's good ground, maybe he won't run. The ground probably, he doesn't want soft to heavy. Yeah. I think he'd definitely stay. Like, he won the Ballymore two and a half years ago over 2-5. It's only the next three furlongs. He's, he's much older now. Mm. Um, I think that the run in the north will have brought him on a lot. But I think if he gets his right ground he, yielding. He, he's starting to look like a proper tree miler. He's yeah. starting to look slower, but he's starting to kind of settle better and do mm -hmm. things better, I think. You know, he was good in Cheltenham when he won uh, the Marsh, just about. Um, 
But I think at 16 to 1, you're, he's going to travel great to well, two out. I, had the, I think he'll stay. I had the privilege of sitting down with Eddie and Michael O'Leary in Eddie's ki- at Eddie's kitchen table last Wednesday morning to do an interview in, in Wednesday's Race and Post. So don't forget, pick up the Race and Post on Wednesday or Tuesday night. You can read the, my interview with Eddie and Michael O'Leary online on racingpost.com. And it is fascinating. The two of them, I have to say, are the best company. They really, really are. Because they just say anything. They're they don't think open. about what they're going to say before they yeah. say it. They just say it. Yeah. And uh, it's, it's, it's fantastic. But Sam Crow. So we come to Sam Crow and a couple of lines from Eddie on Sam Crow. He said, I was very nervous for the March last year. Because I knew if the wind operation worked, that he'd definitely win. Because there's no other horse like Sam Crow. Now, Eddie is ruthless. Eddie doesn't do forgiveness. He kind of forgets about horses if they're beaten. And he still has faith. They're dying to step him up to three miles. They're going to run him and Delta work against one another. So this is fascinating. Mm. Uh, like, we didn't... We weren't chatting about Sam Crow. No, Crum that's what I was shocked when <laughs> yeah. you said Sam Crow. But um, I, I just think I was kind of half taking the mickey. Like, I was going, he's not going to say Sam Crow. I, uh, I just think he's big price, yeah. Okay. So Gavin Lynch is tipping Sam Crow <laughs> for the Savills Chase, which could be a race for the ages at Leperstown on the 28th of December. What have we left, Gavin? Do you want any more tips? Yeah, I want a few more. Uh, the Paddy Power Chase. I like one of this. Uh, I was disappointed yesterday that home by the Lee was back from 14s to 10s I thought he had a good chance but I'm going to go with On the Ropes uh, who was second of Monkfish yeah. in Ferrios well, 8 to 1 I think it's very, very fair value I could see him going off 5 to 1 ok I'm going to put up Fitzhenry for this race at 20 okay. to 1 I think Fitzhenry was second in the race last year caught by Rory Bull yeah. and I actually backed Fitzhenry so. yeah he's a bit of a rogue like he doesn't really love winning No, doesn't love it like likes no. just you know he's happy enough just to get beaten but if he's produced at the right time, I thought he ran better than his finishing position suggests in the tri town. He's only a pound, he's three pound higher than second in the race last year. He's gone down a pound for the tri town run. It looks to me as though Everton has been laid out for the Paul Owens could be maybe in better form. Maybe, yes, but, yes. Um, so Fitzhenry for me in the uh, far class is probably worth a mention too. Mm-hmm. His first run back the last day he was an eye catcher, but a um, few other bits. One other horse to note on the on the Monday, which is what's that, the twenty eighth, uh, in the per temps qualifier. The race that drives you mental. Um, He'll finish sixth. Um, Whatever it is, what is it? No, he won't oh, because okay. he's only rated one twenty three. So he needs to win okay. to, get, to get higher to get into Cheltenham because you need to be at least say one thirty five. But Dan Malisk, that was second in ace, I thought he'd have a big chance. Uh, JP owns it, um, and I suppose we better mention the the three mile hurdle at, at Leprechaun. Mm. You're talking about Sire de Berle, who ran in a couple of pretemps qualifiers the last yeah. two Christmases. So yeah, this year he didn't win a, them either, Gavin. No, didn't win them. Um, so he's a different agenda this year, but yeah. uh, it's going to be a great race. Yeah, I think we're, we think that Sire de Berlay is the real deal as a staying hurdle. Yeah, so but this will tell us if he is. Yeah, and also, but if you're getting an each way price, if you're getting seven to two four to one Ronald Pump or seven to two four to one Fury Road, they're excellent each way value against him. Mm. So good yeah. race, excellent race, and it, like these four days, Gavin, it's just what it's yeah, all about. It After Cheltenham. These are probably the next days that you look forward yeah, to. Yeah, this meeting in Punchestown and Aintree, yeah. yeah. Yeah, okay. Would you usually win or lose over Christmas? Is it a good time The last for you? two Christmases have been a bloodbath. Terrible. Really? And before that, it would have been good. But uh, okay. Willie's horses weren't totally fl- firing the last two Christmases. So hopefully, we get it back this year. I have no doubt you will. That was our Christmas preview. So just before we reveal our latest selections for the 2021 Cheltenham Festival, we're going to have a very, very, very quick look at our portfolios. And Gavin, we stood in this very place last <laughs> we week and you convinced me that Easy Work was going to win the XRSA chase. Yeah. And unfortunately, less than 48 hours later, yeah. the poor horse died of a heart attack. Yeah, like it just shows you the effort horses put in. God love them. And God love the O'Leary's. Uh, Michael, I'd say Easy Work was definitely in his top five horses, so I'm sure that was Yes, upsetting. well... In that interview with Michael and Eddie O'Leary, Easy Work came up in conversation and they said that he's crying out for step up and trip, but they couldn't wait to see him over further. So I know this is only adding insult to injury, <laughs> literally, but uh, they thought he was a very, very good horse, a real top class horse. And for, for anti post picks, it is, it's so cruel, isn't it? It is. Uh, the same happened last year with Gypsy Island. I think within two hours of backing it, I think uh, she'd been declared out for the season so sickening um, yeah no I backed Easy Work last week my, one of my trains of thought was that I just not, wouldn't be sure if Monkfish would have finished second in the Ballymore I checked him he did so anyway that's, that's anyway the, the rest of your tips are all shorter prices they've all most of them have almost halved in price of course Sire de Berlay now is much shorter than the 10 to 1 tipped up at and, and the others like 
you have a really strong team. Ah, it's grand. It's okay. Like, even at this stage, if you didn't have three winners out of that, you'd be disappointed, would you? Ah, two maybe. Yeah, okay. And my list... It's a bit up and down. It's a bit up and down. But Cal Reevy last week got on the team, got him, got her in at 16 yeah, to 1. Yeah, she's a good pick. Now yeah. down to 12 to 1. I still think she's the captain. I think you'll see a really good Cal Reevy at Christmas. Hopefully, you'll see her somewhere. She's a few entries. And I can't wait to see Cal Reevy in action. And Blue Lord, my anti post tip for the Supreme Novice Hurdle. I've watched the race again a few times, the Punch Set Maiden Hurdle win. And the more I see, the more I like Gavin. Uh, I think this horse could be very good. He, Yeah, he's entered twice yes. over the Christmas. Once over two mile and once over two and a half. So yeah. for you, I hope he runs over two miles. Yeah, mile. I hope he runs over two miles. But I, I just, you know, the time wasn't anything fantastic. He didn't win that. But you know, sometimes you see something in a horse and you just say, I think there's going to be loads more to go. Yeah, he's entered in, uh, against uh, Bally Adam and appreciate it. That would be an interesting race of all three shows. Yes, absolutely. Blue Lord, is he going to be... I was going to say, is he going to be my itchy feet from last year? But of course, itchy feet didn't go too well in the March. Pick, but it was a good pick. So that was a quick look at our anti-post portfolios. So it's anti-post picks time. The latest selections from myself and Gavin Lynch for the 2021 Cheltenham Festival. And Gavin, I'm going to do mine first this okay. week. Because I'm going to get it out of the way because I'm afraid. I'm petrified <laughs> of your reaction, okay? Go on. I am. I'm very afraid. Okay. My selection is going to be the big break in what used to be the RSA chase. Right. Yeah. Okay, I'm a bit scared now. Go on. Okay, the big breakaway, I'll make my case, okay? So coming into the season, okay, with the big breakaway, he looked like a chaser. We thought he could be something a little bit special, mm -hmm. okay? He never travelled a yard when Colin Tizzer's horse were out of form in the Ballymore. He stayed on into fourth, okay? You know, you can kind of say, you can look at it two ways, you can kind of say he was very disappointing, but you can say, given how he travelled, he did well to finish fourth, okay? So you can look, but prior to that, he'd been excellent, and it was a very good Ballymore, which was won by Envoy Allen, okay? He comes out this year, first start over fences, and I thought was very good at that. He was good, yeah. He was good, he was, he was, you know, he jumped well, he was a bit big at some, he was still learning, he was still learning. Then he goes to Exeter for more experience, where the Tizzards probably touch, you know, we pick up a race, he's a long odds on, uh, you know, more experience into him, what could possibly go wrong? And what could possibly go wrong is that it was two mile three around Exeter. He had to make his own running and the winner just sat on his tail and just beat him for toe. He yeah. hated every second of it. Okay. He didn't jump really, didn't travel, just hated it, okay? I think there's been an overreaction to that performance because it, that wasn't his trip, that wasn't his track, that wasn't his style of racing. I think now that he steps up back up to three miles in the Cotto Star Novice Chase at Kempton, on December 26th, I think you're going to see the real big breakaway. I'm very forgiven, I know, but this horse deserves another chance. Okay. He's a very good horse. I think he'll win the Cotto Star. I think he could win it convincingly, and I think he could be 5-1 to one for the RSA. I think he'll get a lead. I think he might sit maybe third on the outside. I, he Puppy will give him plenty of room. He might sit just on the, on the tail of uh, Sham Blue if the cap fits is in there. It's a solid race. Mm. I think he's got the most ability in the race. I'm, I, in fact, I'm convinced he's got the most ability in the race. And I think that run in Exeter might have made a man of him. Right. <sighs> Go on. <laughs> Go on. No, no, no. Go uh, on. Tell I'll just me. say, like, he is five, which is a positive. Yeah. So he, he's plenty of uh, time <laughs> to... That's the only positive. ...to get going. But one thing, for example, in Cheltenham, when he was impressive in his beginner's chase, is that one fence, he kind of nearly jammed on the brakes... Yes. And Exeter, he's doing a bit left he's and a bit novice, right. He's I know, but he just novice. needs to—he needs to become a man. You know, we're not talking about Alvin Foto here. We're talking about novice. Yeah, I just—I—I I think Shan Blue might beat him, but I think you think he might even win on Saturday. Well, Shan Blue is an amazing jumper, brilliant jumper, brilliant. Uh, at Weatherby, the two wins. Now he's probably not got as good of engine as your lad, but it'll be an interesting race to watch. Okay, but as regards picks for the twenty twenty one Cheltenham Festival, the big breakaway at twelve to one for the XRSA Chase. You're, you're rating this about a 1 out of 10. No, but I think Bet365 should give you 14s. <laughs> and what do you say, Gavin? If you stick a tenner on a 14s, you yeah. still lose a tenner. You lose a tenner, yeah. Well, I'm convinced. I think the big breakaway deserves another chance. And, and I hope he wins. I am it. adding him to your <laughs> And I am adding him to my portfolio for the 2021 Chetland Festival. Right, Gavin, over uh, to you. If it's okay, I'm going to pick two this week simply because I lost one last week. You did, so okay. So to make up okay. for it. To make up for last uh, week, go for it. The first one is Felix Deji for the Arkel. Now, what I wanted to do, I wanted to back this without Shishkin, because Shishkin could be very hard to beat. But uh, I think Felix Deji will win on the 26th in Leprechaun. Uh He's a very, very good horse. He's better going left-handed, whether it's hurdles or fences. Um, he won two bumpers. Uh, he won a point to point. Um, when he ran in the Supreme, there was a standing start 
the second time mm. and he missed the break he did and he, I think he finished fifth but then he went on to win an entry the grade one now he made a horrendous mistake halfway down the back straight and still beat Armand so he was a very very decent hurdler uh, he won a, a poor beginner's chase of one to five in Killarney and good ground so he's not ground dependent uh, at Punchestown this is what I'm hanging my hat on is the size and Potsy run right so on the first seven or eight fences um, Felix Deji jumped badly out to his left so he's going to be better going the other way around but he beat Size and Potsy. Uh, Size and Potsy since then has won a handicap chase, a good race by six lengths off 149, right? Size and Potsy has now been put up to 157. So I'm saying that in Punchestown, uh, Felix Deji ran to maybe 160. <clears throat> now it was getting three pounds, but I still think it was the best horse. The last few winners of the, the Arkle, uh, put the kettle on, if you include her seven pound, is rated 162. Uh, Duke de Geneva 163. Footpad 166, Altior 168, Duvan 161, and Undeso 168. But I'm saying that uh, Felix Deji ran very close to 160 going right handed. So I think he'll definitely be better going the other way around. Okay. So. And you think he's value? I do it 14 to 1, yeah. Okay. Uh, it's worth something each way. And sure, if you can back him someday without Shishkin, maybe. Okay. So when uh, betting opens up without Shishkin, get him on Felix Deji. But well, we'll see how it goes at Leprechaun first. Race and Pose Novice Chase, 26th of December. You could see. A real challenger to Shishkin. Maybe, but it has to be Dan Ogamine, it has to be Darver Star, it has to be, I don't know where Janet... You Janet's have it over the line already there. <laughs> I don't know where Janet is going to go, but he's a good horse too, so. Okay. Anyway, Felix Deje. Okay, Felix Deje, 14 to 1 for the Arkle is Gavin Lynch's selection. But you have another one to come. Yes, so the, the next one here, don't give out to me over this one, but uh, I think Concertista is well overpriced for the Mayor's Hurdle. Now, what I've done already is I've tipped up a double N violin and um, Honeysuckle yeah, at 12 what's and a half. On one. here, Gavin? But like, this is what I do. I try and make a few quid. But if we get the if the double is the mayor's hurdles before the marsh, but let's say that M by Ellen is odds on for the marsh, and you have her at twelve and a half to one for the double, and you have concertista five to one, I think you've the race covered. What happens? Will, are you going to put up Benny to do next week no, for the race? No, no, I think just she, have all angles covered. I think uh, I think she might go chasing. But the reason why is that okay. Go on, convince me right. because I am going to take some convincing here because okay. I don't think this is a good tip. Six runs in the flat in France. Uh, first ever run over hurdles. It gets beat a short hair in the, in the mayor's novice hurdle. Three bad runs last winter. Mayors can go just out of form. Yeah, just and then about them, are you, yeah. she rolls up by twelve lengths in the mayor's novice hurdle. Yeah, okay. she was brilliant. She yeah. was brilliant. And she likes Cheltenham, as we, see, as we have seen twice. At the end of November, she beats Manella Melody by an easy or cheeky one and three quarter lengths. Uh, she was given away at two pounds. That was over two miles, three and a half furlong. So mm. staying is no she problem. She has pace as well, yeah. She does. Now, the thing that was worrying me was that she might end up in the Matheson hurdle against San Juan and all those and Abigail because there seemed to be a bit of talk that she might, but she's not. She's going for the grade three mare's hurdle at Leperson. To me, that says she's going for the mayor's hurdle at Cheltenham. Okay, but is she better than Honeysuckle? Is she better than Benny Dadu? I think she's got a massive chance. She was very impressive in Fairy House. She bolted up in the mayor's novice at Cheltenham. I just think five to one is, is a it big value, price. Though, yeah. Is yeah. it? Yeah. Okay. I think that's too big. Because there's even a chance that Honeysuckle might go for the English champion hurdle. And yeah. So there's not many uh, contenders, I think, in the mayor's hurdle. Yeah, well, I'd be looking at the race in a similar sort of way to the way you're looking at it, but I'd be kind of saying to myself, and I was very tem tempted, which would have been a disaster, to tip up Benny to do for the mayor's hurdle, because okay. I think we haven't seen her until now. Are they going to chance her over fences, given that she hasn't ran already this season? I think they, they have a score to settle against Honeysuckle in the mayor's hurdle. And I think, I think Willie just might go down that route. I can her. see Concertista bolting up in Leprechaun in the Mayor's Hurdle on the 28th yeah. or 29th. And if that's the case, I'd say it should be 3-1 to one for the Mayor's Hurdle. Do you think there's not that much between her and Honeysuckle? I don't. Really? Yeah. Wow. But if we have Honeysuckle on side, I think this is the main thing. Yeah, sure. You have every, every, every angle covered, that's Gavin. That, that's that race covered. Yeah. You have a bus ticket home. You have the train booked. You have a taxi man booked. You have, you have three different ways of getting home. Bullseye, BFH. <laughs> <laughs> there you go concertista for the mayor's hurdle is Gavin Lynch's latest selection for the 2021 Cheltenham Festival at 5 to 1 bet 365 so up in the ante viewers you're going to be at home this Christmas you're going to have loads of time to play around with you need to study the form and in order to study the form you need to become a Racing Post Ultimate member yes join now use the code UP50 and you get the first three months half price Gavin Christmas, you have to be studying races, oh, yeah. you have to be watching replays, you have to be a Racing Post Ultimate member. Definitely, and you get all the best tips as well. So You do indeed. Even me, even there, I'm there. You and uh, Tom Siegel and Paul Keane. Yeah, you everybody. weren't really talking about me there, Tom. I was, yeah. <laughs> UP50, first three months, half price, become a Racing Post Ultimate member. So that's it for episode seven of Up in the Ante in association with Bet365. 
by the time we see you again, Christmas will have come and gone. Surname will have won the King George. <laughs> Felix Deje will have won the Racing Post Novice Chase. And potentially, Sam Crow might just have won the Savile's Chase as well. Yes, we're back with you on your screens on December 29th for episode 8 of Up in the Ante. Yes, an after Christmas special. Gavin, I can't wait. Yeah, there's going to be plenty of thrills and spills and plenty of horses getting beaten and winning and... Just go handy. Don't go too hard the first day. Yeah, absolutely. Plenty of racing. Don't get carried away. Gamble responsibly. Only bet what you can afford to lose. And Gavin, happy Christmas. Happy Christmas.